Greetings and welcome back to another round of audio shenanigans with controllers and couchins. Couchins. Couches. I am one half of the duo, Full Metal Chicken. And I'm Steph. And uh, It's we, been a legacy to get to record this afternoon. Yes. Um, I accidentally broke a cable. Um, we don't know how the cable broke, yeah, to be honest. It's, we can't push it back. No. So it makes sense as to why we had episodes dropping and some feedback yeah, now, though. Because it's, uh, it's actually bent. On so, like a 45 degree angle? Yeah, so just a, essentially a, um, a mini USB to PC broke. And that's what was causing the short outs. So, yeah, I that's been... Tell me Falcus is not happy. Falcus is not happy. Um, so essentially it's just a, a case of, I found that everyone's coming down with cabin fever, like in the sense of not the Sam Raimi kind of <laughs> cabin fever, but just everyone's on a really short, short leash, short, leash, short wires, short everything. I've even found I'm getting super, super shitty. And I noticed this thing where, um, Activision, I think it was, was it Microsoft or Activision? They said that 70,000, um, PC players have been reported for cheating on PC. Yeah, in so, Warzone. In Warzone. So I haven't played much PC, but I think with the amount of people I've reported lately, I, I feel like I've at least done like 45,000 of those. Take it from <laughs> someone who was playing Warzone last night. Um, it was just terrible. The lag in it, you can't deal with it. You go from having minimum... I think my average is like 10 caps yep. in a normal DOM game and anywhere between 20, uh, let's say about 15 plus kills, Yeah, depending on how it goes. I got five kills and one cap. See, because I was insane. watching you play last night while I was, you know, tanking. Well, World of Tanks my tanking. Child. And essentially, I saw you follow a, a couple of players through the flag there was one that drove a vehicle straight <laughs> through a wall. And I was like, I'm getting out of there. Yeah. Because um, I was capping, I think it was C. Yeah. In the um, warehouse. And they got in the truck to reverse into me. Yeah. So I got up off the flag, went around the wall, restocked and tossed a, a Molotov. And yeah. got two out of the three guys that were there. Yeah. And the third one circumnavigated and got me. But what do you do? I, it wasn't bad innings. But just watching and seeing what people were doing and you've got ones that they're facing away from you yeah, no, and they're still getting no. hits on two players and you go hang on a second this is <laughs> my favorite thing is when everyone spawns in and everyone leaves on vehicles of some nature yeah. planes and i'm like wait for me wait for me <laughs> i want to go in the chopper but yeah um hello everyone welcome back we're yes. i don't know what we are We've, we've just had a rough week. Yeah, We're not absolutely. feeling the best at all. It's not COVID No, <laughs> it's just burnout, I think. Um, so that's just that. Um, as always, if you're here for a specific section of the podcast, timestamps will be in our description or episode notes. Um, and welcome to the party. Hope yep. you're all doing well and you and your families are safe, healthy, healthy, healthy and happy. Blah, blah, blah. What's in your life? Um, Cuzzles? Uh, I've got no, I'm, I'm slowly getting. I've only got two shotguns left to upgrade for gold on nice. um, Call of Duty. I mean, there's obviously a whole lot of other things I should be doing, but I, I brain power wise, all I'm really doing I is get just. It, to be honest, I'm just I playing understand. video games. I had um, a lab meeting yesterday or through Zoom, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna be so productive and like analyze these two journal articles. I'm like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> I think Netflix is done too. Like, oh, do you, oh, do you want to tell a, the story? So essentially, you have a, a monthly payment that comes out, and you know people either go PayPal or credit card or whatever you, or you debit. know, debit, credit card, whatever. debit. It's your usual those two payment methods. But this weird thing where no notification, no nothing. It's just a case of can you update your details, and it's like okay, yeah. So you get in contact with Netflix, and it's like oh no no no, it's a problem on PayPal's end. So you get in contact with PayPal, and it's like oh, no no no, it's a problem with it's Netflix. Netflix so you have to end up cancelling and then you look at some forums and everyone's had to cancel well they started going into my account yeah and started changing things yeah and then I've gone I did not give you permission to do that and then like oh we're giving you a, a complimentary grace period and I've gone I, I appreciate that but 
I don't understand how. Because I went on the forums, and apparently when your payment fails, and it happened to me once because um, you know how the bank exchanges your debit cards? Yeah. And I had thought that I had updated it, but apparently I had not done that. So I had to go click the link. I obviously updated my PayPal information. Click the email link, and because um, Netflix is supposed to automatically email you saying, by the way, your payment did not go through. And yep. I did that because my card had expired. And I had to put the new one on there. This was like two years ago, I want to say. And so I thought, oh, look, I checked my inbox. I didn't receive a notification. I checked my bank. There was no transaction that was put through. I checked my PayPal. There was nothing pending. Nothing. You know how PayPal will tell you if something's sitting there or whatever. There was no authorization issue or anything like that. So I contacted Netflix and I said, hi, I'm so sorry. Um, I can't. Oh, and we were, before we contacted them, we were trying to update and like pay, whether it be through PayPal or through the debit card, because um, there's those two options. And it kept saying that, um, sorry, it could can't be completed or something like that. Yep. And then so I've gone, oh, I'll just jump on a 24-7 chat with Netflix, and I got through to the first person, and she was like, oh, I'll try and force through a payment. And I've gone, oh, thank you so much. Um, and she's like, oh, no, you mustn't have enough money in the account. And I thought, I'm sorry, darling, but I've got enough in there to support a few years. Yep. Worth of Netflix. We'd be rolling on that 750 from the government. <laughs> no, no, yep. I'm joking, but there was enough in there. Um, because I transfer anything I don't use between scholarship payments out into savings, but I made sure I had enough in there um, for that specific purpose. And then so she's like, oh, no, 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 it, there must be enough. You need to contact PayPal and you need to contact your bank because they're not authorizing the payment. And then I knew my PayPal was working because we had paid for something else that day. Um, and then I've gone, well, that's bullshit, right? Yep, complete bullshit. And then I realized that, so I ended the chat with her saying, okay, I'll figure it out on my end. Thank you so much for your help. And I asked them to send me a chat script. And I've gone, while I was there checking for my chat script email, I realized I didn't receive a notification email from Netflix saying that the payment did not go through, right? And I checked every single folder. There's only one email attached to that account. And it's been there since I opened the account. I think it was in 2015, wasn't it? Yeah. Like December. And so I did all of that. And I've gone, no, this can't be right. And while I'm contacting PayPal and contacting my bank, I had, um, I was looking at forums as well while I was on hold. Like I had one on chat, one on the phone. Um, and then, so I was like, other people are experiencing this too. And then I've gone, all right, you know what, let's just try again. Uh, I got through to someone on Netflix really quickly because the bank said it's fine. PayPal said, don't know what you're talking about. A bank said that there was no money taken and there was no, it looked like no one had approached, you know what I mean, how a transaction needs to be initiated? Yep. No transaction was initiated. And then I've gone, okay. PayPal said, I, you know, we can't tell you if someone's tried to, but we can tell you that there's no transaction is sitting there pending. No one's accessed your account, anything like that. It's fine. The most recent account was a thing we had paid for earlier that day. And I've gone, that's, thank you. You know, that's what I thought. And I've gone back, contacted a second person. And then they're like, oh, we're going in and we're putting in a two-week grace period for you so you can watch things offline. And I've gone, I appreciate you doing that. But did I, you know, I'm not asking for a grace period. I just want to know why my payment isn't going through. And they're like, you need to wait 24 hours. And he's like, give me your password and I'll have a look myself. And I'm like, N alarm bells were ringing. So I've gone, no, thank you. Thank you for your help. Um, have a great day. Stay safe. Stay, stay healthy. Ended the chat, asked it to email me. And I've gone, you know what? I'm actually quite sus. So I went through into my Netflix account on my computer and I screenshotted everything. I closed my, because I could cancel my membership because... Obviously, the billing period had finished, if that makes sense. Like, it had ended the day before, and it was billing us that morning to start another month. So, it, immediately, we were lucky enough to terminate our membership because we weren't uh, rolling over another month. And then I waited 24 hours, and then I just reinstated it, and I've gone, fuck that, I'm just putting it on the $10 tier yep. anyway. Um, and that's it. Because with our internet, 
which has been giving us extra issues as well with all the stupid people oh. working from home and streaming and everything. It's, We're not getting HD anyway. And it's funny because I actually was hearing to some like hearing some people complain on a lobby. Oh my and god! They're getting a hundred megabit. Can we per talk second. about the person who's running the EB Games Australia Twitter forum a and they're like a, a distant memory? And I'm like, well, who are you and where do you live yeah. to have even gotten that speed to begin with? Yeah, a gigabyte a second. Up and down. And it's like 25 yeah. millisecond ping. Yeah. Oof. And I'm sitting on like, what, 400 millisecond oh. of ping and 4.5 megabit per second download and you sort of go all these people complaining and it's like you look at it and kind of go how am i actually oh, achieving oh. anything on an online In game with that kind of lag our clan plays it's just a bunch of like a couple of well one of my friends from uni um who introduced me to one of their friends that from school and their outside of uni job and then we became friends and then they introduced me to two other people and then i brought you in and so we have a clan and we have happy hour that we play like late nights. If people are free, there's always at least one person on, I'd say, between 8 and midnight. Yeah. So if someone feels like playing, there's someone there. Yeah. And last night, I don't know what was happening, but my controller was just Dying. disconnecting. But the battery was fully charged. And I realized that's the port charger while you were out getting this cable that we got from EB Games for four bucks. Yeah. So I think that's what the issue is unless it's the controller reaching its lifespan but I'm not going to spend another 100 bucks no. on a controller when the new system's coming out in like f 6 months yep. How, let's just do this quick math April, May, June, July, August, September, October in what is that did I just count 8 months? Yep. I think I counted 8 months so I just found another controller we had and fingers crossed fingers crossed Thus yeah as far it's working and my friend messaged me this morning and he's gone you weren't talking on chat last night. Is everything okay? <laughs> like, I just want to make sure, like, you were really, really quiet. Um, are, you, are you all right? And I thought, I'm so sorry. My controller kept disconnecting to the point where, like, I couldn't even hear the game no, play, just... let alone talk. Um, but you know how it registers the jackies in there? So that's probably why they thought that I wasn't talking to them because I kept trying to unplug it and everything and just wasn't working. Yeah. So, yeah, and they're like, oh, we figured that's why your stats were pretty shit and you weren't playing, like, objective. And you were down the table for the whole of the night. And I'm like, yeah, that That, that would do why. it. That would do it. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I'll tell our other friends that you don't have to worry. So, yeah, that's that. I'm level 99 now, I think. What are you, fam? 86. Oof, I gained on you. Yeah. And then I stopped playing to give you a chance to catch up. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Yep. I would like to say that in a week's time, you if I can get a 110, I'll be happy. I reckon you probably get to 130 in a week. It depends if I push, like if I have a day where I'm like, you know what, I'm playing all day today. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff this thesis. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it for me. All right, yeah. Um, we watched a movie this week. Yeah, Code, Code 8. 8. Um, which was actually based off a short film. Um, it has um, the guy from Arrow in it. Stephen Amell Ooh. and his cousin Robbie. Um, and so they actually... his name McQueen? McQueen? Yeah. Uh, Oliver McQueen? Oliver McQueen, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Green Arrow. Um, so, yeah, uh, Code 8 essentially was just a uh, movie that was actually done off a fundraising campaign. So basically the premise with non-spoiler, um, it's if you've played in from a second son, it is essentially yeah. that. Um, so there's people who have, and it's also like X-Men, so there's people that are, have powers, they call them, pa what do you call them? Power people or something? Yeah. Um, and so there are different classes and uh, basically throughout history they've been known to keep the kind of like the world afloat yeah um they do a lot of jobs and they can pull up for example how the examples were oh we can build houses and skyscrapers so much faster and it's so much more efficient and we're giving jobs to our people and then all of a sudden the machine started taking over because they didn't want to pay people powered people to do the jobs and all that kind of thing and it 
I dare I say it has a lot of reflection on racism in modern day, but that's a different story in analysis. And so you get this guy who is an electric, yep. but he also looked like he had the melty power to the fire power, but yeah. that didn't come up. Was just, there was, so basically you get three quarters, of the, no, not even three quarters. I want to say halfway through the movie yeah. and it's stellar. It's fantastic. You're so invested. And then from there, I was like, where did this go? It just went downhill. It literally just went meh. And it's almost like they were just setting it up for the... A like, kick. Like a that. follow on. So, yeah. So, I'll probably give it about a 6 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 5. So, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, worth checking out. Right on. Yeah. Quiz today? Quiz today. All right. So uh, today's quiz is uh, don't freak out, but we'll guess if you're American, British, or Australian with 99% accuracy. It's a scientific fact. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Okay. Right. So what do you call this? It and looks like a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, so I'm going to say cookie. The options are biscuit, cookie, bicky, something not listed here. To me, it's not a biscuit. To me, it's a cookie because a bicky is like your teddy bear bickies. Yeah, you know? so it's cookie. And it's like, uh, what do you call this? Is and it's it... a woman lying on the sand wearing... Um... Swimsuit. Okay. Um, the options are swimming costume, cosy, bathing suit, swimsuit, togs, swimmers, bathers. Something not listed here. I'm going to say bathers. Yeah, swimsuit, maybe. Swim, swimsuit, yeah, swimsuit. Okay. Um, what do you call this? It's um, basically, it's a toilet, but um, <laughs> bathroom, restroom, loo, washroom, dunny. Something not listed here. See, straight away, you say Dunny, they go, oh, you're a, no you're a naughty. Yeah, I would have said toilet. Yeah, but it's like Lou. I'm going to the toilet. I'm going to, go, I'm going to bathroom. I'm just going to go, something not listed here. Yeah, same. But you could say Dunny. See, Dunny straight away gives away Aussie. It'd say Aussie, but have you ever called it, oh, fucking hell, it automatically selected bathroom. Sorry, I'm, give me two seconds. I'm you going, read the next one while I Dunny. fix this. So the next one is like a bunch of uh, sugared lollies. So they've got sweets, candies, lollies, something not listed here. I'm going lollies. Yeah, those are lollies. Um, then there's uh, a picture of a room, and it says a flat apartment unit, something not listed here. Well, It's an apartment to me, because it's a multi-story building. Oh, uh, yeah, apartment. Flat, maybe. Flat? Unit? No, flat. Apartment? Yeah, apartment. Now, um, what do you call this? And then it's got um, red, it yellow... It looks like what I would call capsicums. Yeah, yeah capsicums. Capsicum. So bell peppers, pepper, capsicum, something not listed capsicum. here. I um, call them capsicum. What do you call this? Uh, I call it a photo of trees. It's literally a bunch of green trees with sunlight streaming through on the grass. Yeah. So The, the options are forest, the woods, the bush. That's not the bush. No. Going by the, the bush foliage. The bush is half dead. Yeah, you've got ferns. So essentially that's a forest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you call this? And um, it's a woman in a supermarket aisle. I basically call that, yeah, supermarket. It's the shops, the grocery store, the supermarket. That's yep. a supermarket. Um, what do you call these? I call them wellies. It's a picture of what I would say gumboots standing in the mud. Yep, with wellies. With some brack everywhere. There's wellies, rain boots, gumboots, something on this tier. Yeah, wellies. I call them gumboots. Uh, what do you call this? I call this a skyline photo of a building, and it says city centre, downtown, CBD, something not listed here. I call it maybe CBD. I'd call it the city. Mm, I'm going to call it CBD. So I'm going to know something not listed here. Oof, what did you get? I got Australian. So did I. You know why? Because I selected Dunny and Cookie. I said Cookie. Oh. See, we did very different sort of yeah. at the beginning. I said Cookie. I said Bathers because I'm from Melbourne. Yeah. Um, I said something not listed here because I'd call that a toilet. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you call this? Those are lollies. That's an apartment. Those are capsicum. That's a forest. So you know that the forest one is automatically going to... Because if you selected the woods, you'd either be um, British or American. Yeah. And that would be the tiebreaker. So for the fact that we call that... Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you do? Yeah. Roll with it. Fair enough. Good to know. Born and raised. Alrighty. Um, anything else? No, we that's pretty much it. Before we jump into the weekly news. No. Crack into it. Okay. So I actually screamed when I showed you this on Twitter last week. Um, and it happened, I think, literally the night after we recorded our last episode. Yeah. But apparently, um, the CIA have declassified some reports um, showing some more Soviet paranormal investigation. I think, what was the last one? We spoke about Project Stargate. Yep, and so, uh, yeah, men who scream at goats. 
So apparently, um, in some documents obtained by Emma Beast, her well, their handle, I should say, is that Sec Geek um, on Twitter, dating back between 1977, and they show U.S. records on Soviet and East European parapsychology research, including in quotation marks black magic and devices in quotation marks used to duplicate psychic effects. The CIA especially noted major uncertainties in the extent of such abilities. So Emma's posted new. It took four years, but I just got some newly declassified CIA reports studying the Soviet Union's use of black magic, telepathic control, and psychotronic generators, devices they said turn people into psychics and let them move objects with their mind, hashtag FOIA, which is Freedom of Information Act. Um, so I described some screenshots of the um, documents that this person posted. Um, one was dated April 1977, um, Soviet and East European parapsychology research. Some recent US research suggests that it may be possible to use certain paranormal abilities for military or intelligence purposes. There are major uncertainties, however, about the extent to which such abilities exist, their reliability, and their mechanisms of operation, the practical utilization of these abilities has not yet been demonstrated conclusively. And then on a separate page, it looks like page six of this document, um, there's a little snippet about black magic. And it says, about 1969, the Soviets reportedly established an official group in the covert program devoted to collecting information on black magic. This group, headed by D.G. Mirza, was given its own secret laboratory, M4 in the appendix, in Moscow, and was assigned the tasks of identifying, locating, and evaluating the capabilities of sorcerers, witches, and the incantations used by such individuals. It was unlikely that this avenue of investigation has produced any applied paranormal systems, but the data collected may have benefited other areas of research and may have improved their techniques for training subjects to acquire or to improve paranormal abilities. Thus, the research may still be included in the Soviet program. Um, and then apparently there's a another page what looks like a separate document because this one um the other one looked like it was typed on a computer this one looks like a typewriter um and it says point four in 1979 soviet parapsychology research apparently began to move away from remote viewing to focus extensively on behavior modification subliminal suggestions and electromagnetic effects on physiologic behavior um so there's that, and then there's one that looks like it was written maybe, dare I say, decades earlier. Yeah. And it says, the amazing thing to me is that prominent Soviet scientists appear so involved politically that they are concerned only with the possibility of their own promotion and do not see what is going on with their own laboratories. Their research is very sloppy and often, I think it says, illid? Yeah, it? the alleged discoveries are later disproven. Thank you. Um, and then, yeah, so that's all to be released. Um, and Emma Best has said, since people are digging this, I'll thread some of my related work using documents out of the CIA's vault. So there's a whole thread on Twitter, and you can also go support Emma Best on Patreon. I believe they have one. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool, and it tucked in nicely after yeah. what we did on um, Project Stargate. So yeah, that was cool. What you going to know? What you going to do? Um, the next discussion point was something you really wanted to talk about. Which was... Uh, this whole COVID-19, COVID yeah. 5G... Conspiracy bullshit. Um, so essentially, a wavelength of energy cannot cause a virus. Can we just mention the basic conspiracy points? This yeah. kind of deserves its own episode, but I, didn't want to, I don't want to cash in now why COVID-19 is such a hot topic because yeah. I don't want people feeling like we're doing it for views. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically the idea is that COVID-19 is lab-made, which it's not. Yeah. That 5G is suddenly, while everyone is home, being rolled out at an escalated rate. Yeah. That the government is, don't ask me which government, but they say the government, is making COVID-19 COVID vaccines that contain nanoparticles that are going to um, connect us to some grid 
So the government, don't ask me again which government, but the government can track us wherever we go, yep. doing whatever it is we do to see where we're going, who we're talking to, yep. and so on and so forth. Uh, and that Bill Gates had something to do with it because Bill Gates has the Bill and Melinda Foundation where they donate a lot of money to medical research and one forefront being putting money into all of the developing COVID-19 vaccines right now. Yeah. Um, there's probably a ton more that I'm missing, but those are the main points that I can recall off the top of my head right yeah. now. Please begin. So I think it's honestly just garbage because at this point, I'm literally in that, you know, mindset of... I, that it's just it's beyond bullshit. It's beyond be, stupidity. It's beyond stupid. I've, but if honestly, say for instance, you just go to that little point oh 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 one percent chance where they've actually done that, you kind of go, "That's a real breach of human ethics." Like majorly, I don't perceive that as being crazy because number one, that's what we're moving towards. Yes, yeah. right. We carry around for, like I remember my year twelve in twenty ten. My year twelve mathematics teacher was like. You can't rely on a calculator. You guys are stupid. Um, you're not going to carry on a calculator in your back pockets every day to do your maths for you. Yeah. Bitch, I have a smartphone that costs more than some computers that I am connected to anything. I can find anything within a couple of pats on a glass screen. Yeah. Right? Eventually, that will be implanted. I don't know how. I don't know when. I personally perceive within the next 50 to 100 years it's going to happen. We're going to have implants in our body where it's like implanted over our eyes as well and us looking. Yeah. It's like going to be our new subconscious. Yeah. Um, a bit like total recall. You, yeah. Like, well, not even subconscious, but you you know that voice you have in your head where you talk to yourself? Yeah. That is going to, when you're like thinking to yourself... That is how we're going to Google things. Yeah. That's how we're going to check the weather. That's how we're going to text our friends yeah. and call, you know, start calls and stuff like that. Um, I would recommend the sh- um, the Thousandth Floor. It's a trilogy, a YA trilogy, but that's the way I think technology is going to go. Yeah. Um, so that is going to happen. That's not what creeps me out. That's not what I have an issue with. I know that that's the way technology is going. However... And I say this with the utmost respect, but also fuck you, Tony Abbott. I can't have a solid internet connection to run a video game. Yeah. Let alone a connection to tell the government how many times I've gone to the toilet, which bus I'm taking to uni, and what shop I'm shopping at, whether it be Woolworths or Coles right now. That, Murray... I love you, so, but uh, how do you find these elastic bands? Yep, so essentially it's just a case of, you know, how do you take high and low um, wavelengths or bandwidth, whatever you want, and then presumably say it's causing, you know, the the flu re- because response. Because they're saying it's, just... they're saying it's radiation. And I'd like to point out that on the wavelengths, right, your microwave... Yeah, puts out more radiation. closer to the gamma side of radiation than your internet. Yeah. Than your phone. Yeah. It's... The radio waves floating around, aren't they smaller? They are. Than um, internet thingamabobs? Much smaller. Oh, stupid. But, you know... People are just... They want something to pin it on. They want to... They don't, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but they don't understand biology. So they're, like, I have, I don't really consider them family, but I was talking to my mum the other day, and she was like, this relative thinks it's all a conspiracy. And I've gone, really? You don't see people posting pictures in America, let's, for example, Seattle or New York, of their family relatives dying at such an exponential rate, and you're going to tell them... It's not real? Well, look at it this way. Um, In regards to, like, the radiation levels, uh, say, for instance, you go through the airport and you go through one of those scanners. That is approximately 0.1 microsieverts of radiation. Now, you look at that and go, okay, I'm going to go get a chest X-ray, which is 100 microsieverts. Yes, but those are on the... They're on the different... Exactly. Different... 
right? Because it's like, hold on. But, I'm not a physicist. I'm, I should have called my brother for this se- section of the podcast because I'm not a physicist. But, but I know this because I had to do it for freaking um, wavelength 5G. Yeah, but also too, you look at the yearly dosage that humans can have and it's about a thousand microsieverts. If you put it into a big perspective and go, okay, well, the Chernobyl reactor meltdown was putting out um, about, oh, I don't know, close to 50 million microsieverts. Um, so that's a sense of, you know, you're basically dead with that. But you look at this and obviously you see people putting out photos of the um, guys climbing the actual cell phone towers in radiation suits. It's like, well, obviously, if you're at a cell phone tower, you know... It's beamed directly towards you. Yeah, you are It's like a, a dentist. My dentist yeah. x-rays me every two years. Yeah. And when he does that, he puts the heavy lead suit on my chest. Yeah. He puts the plastic in my mouth so I bite down, down on it so I have the alignment. Yeah. And then he leaves the room. Because I'm just getting the x-ray once every two years, yeah. but that man is x-raying at least five patients a week. And if yeah. he stayed in that room, that's when he would get DNA breaking wavelength. Yeah. So there's this picture, which I'm trying to look at now. So if we're going from the biggest to on the upon the spectrum, so the highest to the... Which way does it go again? His non-ionizing is supposed to be on the right. Left, right? Yeah. So that's the very low frequency. So those are things like your computers... Um, any AM, FM radios you have, then, uh, so you're moving from three kilohertz to being your monitors, very low frequency. And then you hit your like radio frequency spectrum. So that's your radios, your television, um, your cell phones and your PCs. And that can be LF, MF, HF, VHF, UHF between the three, 30 kilohertz. Um, and then it, kind of touches the 30 gigahertz. Apparently, 5G is going to operate between um, that 30 gigahertz region there, right? And I'd like to point out that overlaps the radio frequency spectrum and the microwave spectrum, right? Yep. And then you hit the SHF, EHF band, which is the microwaves being your microwave satellites and whatnot. And then... <laughs> You hit the visual light, which does nothing to you anyway. So this is all non-ionizing. It can't damage anything, right? So you hit your visible light spectrum. Well, you hit your infrared, technically, first. And then you hit your visible light spectrum, which is what the sun beams down on you every single fucking day. And then you have your ultraviolet. And then that's where the ionizing radiation starts. So we have three separate things that you can perceive Mm -hmm. before you hit the ionizing range. And then you've got your your ultraviolets, then you've got your x-rays, and then you've got your radioactive sources such as gamma rays. Right? So, wet people are dumb. They are extremely dumb. So, essentially, and then what comes in is the scaremongering to then, like, slow the damn planet down. Um, Essentially, look, uh, Australia hasn't been able to complete their NBN rollout map and it's been how long have they been rolling out NBN for five at least five years that I'm aware of ridiculous so essentially we are 5g we are basically at this point slower than somewhere like Tajikistan that's how bad we are you know it's ridiculous when you know the prime minister says I just want to be able to send an email fuck you Tony Abbott seriously fuck you just stupid so, yeah, this is why we have, you know, extremely slow internet. You can't do anything. You know, they should have stuck with the whole internet is free. Imagine that. Internet is free. Free internet. But then we just get taxed more. That's the key, because nothing is free. Well, the perception of free, you know, is free. They've been trying to roll it out since 2007. There you go. It's now 2020. 13 years. And we still haven't. It's still not finished. And even, for example, the one we're going to get is fibre to the curb. So our house is not NBN ready. No. Right? So technically we're still on a copper line. Yes. From here to the yes. pit at the front of the house. Yes. So you're going to tell me that they're somehow going to get 5G broadcast faster than the 13 years it's taken them to get NBN ready. Yeah. And they're going to charge me more money to access NBN 
than they would for me to access 5G anyway. And, it doesn't make sense. And I mean, like, China was able to build a hospital in how many and then days? they bulldozed it because the whole thing was... One, they realised, oh, shit. First, it was busted to shit because some doctors were actually streaming. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of TikToks about it as well. Yeah. Uh, of the footage. And then these people have all suddenly disappeared. Yeah. And then when they realised, oh, shit, the world's catching on that we've built all these hospitals, we better bulldoze them so they don't know how bad yeah. we actually had it. Yep. You know, we want to fudge our numbers. Yep. Ridiculous. Well, that's pretty much it I have yep. for that. Anything else? No, that's pretty much it on that. So, stupid virus. It's not a virus. And I was talking to a friend because they... Um, and you can't build up immunity to freaking, you know, wavelengths. Uh, one of my friends, Sandy, sent me this video because apparently one of her cousins um, is really into the weird conspiracies, right? Yep. And so she sends me these and we critique them together and she was like, you know what, my dogs are microchipped, chipped. I don't care. And I'm like, you know what, as you know, my cats are too. Fucking microchip me because you know why? You know how much easier crimes would be able to solve? Missing person, Done. scan them. They're not missing no more. And I understand then people are going to say, well, they're going to cut the microchips out of you and then they're going to swap them and they're going to do dissections. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But let's look at shoplifters. Let's look at fucking the fucking criminals. Yep. You're telling me, like, doing it could solve so many problems. We don't have the infrastructure right now to support it. We just, what was it, the last year, um, when was it that we did the census? And the Australian government couldn't even cope with the census no. updates because it was suddenly all online for the first time in years. Yeah. And people were panicking and trying to get it all done on the one night. We did it automatically as soon as we got, to I say, straight away, as soon as we got the notes for it. So we didn't have to deal with that because if you don't do it, you get fined. Just... The Australian system cannot cope with that because everyone logging in looked, it shut the system down because the system was like, it's a DDoS attack. We're getting hacked. We must shut down. And then I think it was for about two weeks, wasn't it? They extended the census. These are like, on census night. And then all these poor bastards started logging in the afternoon before census and of the uh, census evening and they started all their census stuff and it shut down and the system was like, we must shut down, it's a DDoS um, attack. But it was literally just the Australian citizens trying to fill in their census. And you're telling me the Australian government wants to microchip me. Yeah. You know, they got better shit. The Australian do. government can't even keep track of the dickheads who are going outside in a fucking pandemic. Yeah. Let alone microchipping and finding people. Was it like 26 people? No, in a party of the weekend. At a party. And 16... Was it, was it a Wog Easter party? I have no was idea. Was that what it was? The 16 of them got fined. 1600 Good. bucks. Good. Muppets. Good. Muppets. It should have been the full 20,000. Yeah, should have. It baby. should have been. And they had prams and babies. Mm. Yeah, because they're idiots. Alrighty. Um, anything else you want to cover no. before we get into today? No, all good. Uh, we wanted to do something a little bit more low key. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, so today we're going to be talking about our second urban legend, Goody Cole. Um, my references today are from the historic Ipswich on the Massachusetts North Shore, History of American Women, and the Hampton Historical Society. So, a basic bio um, if you look at um, this is how I found out about it, but if you look at the, um, for each state, the most pro popular urban legend for New Hampshire, um, it's Goody Cole. Yep. And so Eunice, or Goody was her nickname, Cole, was blamed for numerous local tragedies and accused of witchcraft twice. And legend says that locals staked her heart to make sure she wouldn't bother them. Mm. But they continued to blame numerous events on her. Some say she still pays a visit from time to time. Joy. Um, so Eunice Cole uh, was born in 1590 in England. And she died on sometime in October in uh, 1680 in Hampton, New Hampshire in the US. Her maiden name is unknown. However, she was. it's known that she lived somewhere on the coast of New Hampshire. Um, she's better known as Goody Cole because she, under that pseudonym, was the only woman convicted of witchcraft in New Hampshire. Yep. Her husband was William Cole. Um, there are no records of them having children. However, it's known that they came to the US when they were already past their childbearing age. Um, so it's possible that they had children in England and left them behind. 
Um, but no one, it's not known that they brought any to America, if that makes yeah. sense. Uh, so both of them were indentured servants of a Mr. Matthew Craddock, who was a wealthy London merchant. Um, after their service was over, they were released from he. Um, they were pretty much released, and they came to New England, um, and um, they were they got it for ten pounds. They could come to England. Sorry, they could leave England, code to the US for ten pounds. That's pretty cheap. So Eunice and um, William came to America sometime between um, sometime in 1636 near the end of the so-called Great Migration which was between 1620 and 1640 when apparently 20,000 Englishmen and women crossed the Atlantic to settle in New England. So in Boston they were granted two acres um, for all of us metric bitches out there that's 8,100 uh, meters squared of land. Yep. In Also how much is that? Cost wise to do that today, let alone oh, in that area. Could in you imagine? In millions. Uh, in Mount Wollaston, which is now Quincy, Massachusetts, on the 20th of February in 1637. And sometime later, they left for Exeter, New Hampshire, before the end of the year. Uh, both of them were followers of Reverend John Wheelwright, who was an, uh, who believed in antinomianism and in Christianity, uh, anto antomianism. Um, was we took the principle of salvation by faith and divine grace to the point of asserting that the saved are not bound to follow the moral law contained within the Ten Commandments. This is like, because uh, I believe in God and I'm so good, yep. uh, God's going to forgive me for whatever the fuck I want to do. So fuck the laws. Yep. You know what I mean? Above I'm the above law. the law. So um, they, this guy must have wanted to go, so they must have wanted to go with him. Yep. is the most popular thought. So they moved to Hampton, New Hampshire, and they received a 40-acre this time, which is 160,000 metres squared. Just a, a casual parcel casual. of land. Yeah, just, just casual. casual. The house itself sat on five acres or 20,000 metres squared, um, and it was situated slightly east of where the Baptist, Baptist Church sits today on Winnicunnet Road. Yep. And the other 35 acres, or 140,000 metres squared, was a good source of income, considering that Mr. William was a carpenter. And uh, he eventually died on the 26th of May in 1662. But his wife was formally accused of witchcraft three times during her lifetime, from what I could find. Um, the first time was in Boston in 1656, when several townspeople testified against her. Then she was imprisoned in 1660, but was released until 1662. Um, and then she was returned to prison sometime between 1668 and 1761. And then she was eventually acquitted despite the just ground of vehement suspicion of her guilt. Gotta love vehement suspicion. Just casual. Just casual. Vehemently. Vehemently. And then she was again accused in 1673, but acquitted. And then once again in 1680, but she wasn't indicted and she was still kept in prison. And also, how scary does it have to be for only one woman? Like, what was this bitch doing yeah. <laughs> to make her the only woman in New Hampshire that was not only the only person convicted of being a witch, but several times over? Yeah, she sure as hell wasn't making biscuits. No disrespect, yeah. Miss Eunice, but there's also, some... what were you? What was you doing? Yeah, there's some crazy shit going on. <laughs> like, imagine if she was just like casually painting sage and painting sage, drying it, smudging her house, oh, and then even her reverend was like, Eunice, you yeah. done stuffed up. You've gone a little bit batshit crazy on this. <laughs> You've gone El loco in the cabeza. <sighs> So she kept being accused and acquitted and it happened again in 1673 and then again in 1680, um, like we said. And then it kept happening until she died in 1680. Um, and apparently she was quite hastily buried in an unmarked grave somewhere in Hampton. It's where about still... So they know which like they know which cemetery she's buried in, if that makes sense. But yeah. her exact plot they is unknown. Know. So, well, um, that was just the children. Um, so it's believed that she's somewhere near the site of today's Tuck Museum. 
Um, so the local legend here is that it's believed that she was stabbed with a stake after her death. And this is a quote, in order to exercise the baleful influence she was supposed to have possessed. And a horseshoe was hung on the stake just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Just casually to be just safe. Casual. Just, just casual. Just casual. Wow, well, you've got to love superstition. You've got to love it. They, uh, you know, really pushed it back then. But, I mean, the whole, you know, stake through the heart and the whole, you know, horseshoe. Oh, better, you know. just Oh, that horseshoe. Superstitions aren't evil. No. How dare you be super... You know, you can be superstitious. But how dare... Oh, no, no, no. no. You're a woman and you want to read? Fuck you. Fuck you. (laughs) Burning you, bitch. Yep, you're gone. Um, So, Goody Cole was apparently very and a very unpleasant person and you can imagine after your second or third acquittal of the people saying you're a witch you'd be pretty pissed off right but apparently um this historian from hampton his name is joseph dow he says that she was ill-natured and ugly artful and aggravating malicious and revengeful and you know what I would be too, because if my neighbours were telling the police constantly, this bitch is reading too many books, we should chuck her in prison, Yeah. you best bet that I'm going to be a bitch. So, <laughs> wait a minute, that definitely sounds like Margaret Thatcher. Ooh. 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 I mean, look what she did to the mining industry, you know. You just think, maybe like because I suppose everyone's digging deep into the earth, into the darkness, she didn't want that. Oh no, Mother no. Nature came no, forward no, and no, asked no. her. Oh. Oh, oh. Alright. Um, so, apparently on the her 300th anniversary, um, the town of Hampton in 1938 decided that they were going to clear her name and they formed the Society in Hampton Beach for the apprehension of those falsely accused accusing Eunice Goody Cole of having familiarity with the devil. Um, and they shortened their name to the Goody Cole Society. <laughs> so I found this poem, and it's an excerpt from Witter's Wreck of Rivermouth. Um, this is a some guy called John Greenleaf Whittier. And also, those are the most American British crossover names. Yep. Whittier, you'd think, was a southern name, though. I don't know what it's doing you know, in New England, but let's let's just discuss this. Gather around the campfire while I recite this for you. Oh, okay. Geez. As they rounded the point where Goody Cole sat by her door with her wheel a, a twirl, a bent and bleary eyed poor old soul. Oh ho, she muttered, ye're brave today. But I hear the little waves and say, The broth will be cold that waits at home, for it's one to go, but another to come. She's cursed, said the skipper. Speak her fair. I'm scary always to see her shake, her wicked head with its wild grey hair and nose like a hawk and eyes like a snake. And so people have analysed this poem and then they've added some shit that people have said about her and apparently the people of the town believe that she took the shapes of eagles, dogs and cats. Okay, radio. that's... Um... Someone's tripping serious balls. So this is some serious... Um, what was that book series and TV show about the kids who turn in... Animorphs. Yeah. This is some serious animorph shit in the 1600s. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. So now we're going to talk about some context. And Go apparently, um, you know, let's think about what time did Salem happen? That um, was in the 1600s too. I think was so, it yeah. early 1600s? I can't. So apparently, well, we know that New Englanders um, were very, very fearful of the devil above all else. Yeah. Uh, they believed that natural disasters were caused by a person who was possessed by Old Nick, being aka a pseudonym for the devil because yeah, you the, can't uh, say the devil. Salem outright. witch trials occurred between 1692 yeah. and 1693. Thanks, fam. Um, so. You know, they're like, oh, if our crops are dying, if a cow suddenly stops producing milk, uh, if there's a local epidemic, we have to blame someone in the community, especially that very old eccentric person that's probably suffering from dementia. Yep. And Alzheimer's. But we don't know that because what is medicine? Yep. Medicine is meh. So, um, basically, where was I going for here? 
for years, people pretty much gossiped about her. And I always thought that gossiping was one of the, against one of the... Like, it's considered a vice yeah. in Victorian England. So I don't know why it's okay. But uh, Eunice Cole, um, at least on three occasions, her neighbours brought her to court for conducting... Uh, for conducting witchcraft, or as it was called back in the day, familiarity with the devil. Uh, so Eunice and her husband were poor and elderly, but they did own a lot of land, which we spoke about near the salt marshes, um, and apparently that was highly... You can imagine, like, we're talking today about how much we could fucking deal with that amount of land, let yeah. alone the other townspeople, right? Exactly. So apparently that was a very um, desirable plot parcel of land you know just tiny um so then it's believed that people were trying to break her character because they thought that hey if we get rid of these elderly people then uh you know there's a lot of land up for grabs and we can do a lot with it yeah however she was very strong um she stood up for her rights and she was a dare i say an actual feminist yeah. When the feminist plight was necessary, right? Uh, and that's a no-no. Yes. So you can imagine why everyone all of a sudden is like, you're a witch. Yeah. You'd be communicating with the devil. Women don't have rights. Yep. What are you talking about? And then so apparently these children said, obviously her neighbor's kids, saying that, oh, we saw Miss Eunice take the form of a dog, a cat, and an eagle. We've seen the devil, a black dwarf with a red cap. Sitting at her table. Um, apparently a man whose cattle had wandered over to their property and eaten grass on their property. He herded them back and his calves started dying. Because uh, they probably ate, you know... Anthrax, but that's a difference. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and then apparently like calves were dying, some disappeared. And it's like... Wow, it, it, it's her. I mean, oh yeah, it's got to be. What's her. she doing? You think she'd be killing? If she's so poor, why is she poisoning them? Exactly. She'd be killing them and eating them. Yeah. If she's so poor. Yeah. But whatever, you know, if she's such a witch and you're telling us she's got no money, she'd be more worried about food source, let alone poisoning calves. Yeah. But that's a different story. Doing. Yeah. Um, and then apparently she was also blamed for the loss of a fishing boat. Because the fishing boat and all the sailors on board were lost at sea. And, you know, because she's commanding the ocean. <laughs> uh, you know? Oh, jeez. The devil told her that morning. Oh, yeah. Eunice, that ship out there, fuck it and everyone on there. Yep, because it. Because um, wayfaring was such a safe occupation. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, someone didn't sort of navigate the channel properly and, you know, hit a rock. and. Sunk. No, no, she put the rock there. Oh, yeah, she did. It was, a rock it was her. The, the devil told her to go swimming and to deposit the rock there. Yep. She went to hell and she summoned the rock because she's converting with the devil. Absolutely. Ooh. Um, apparently in 1908, uh, a Hampton man reported that his house, like, so his house, this guy, is on the parcel of land um, close to where their house would have been built right and he's like i've had nothing but bad luck i believe her spirit still curses this place um and he's like maybe she's actually buried on my property maybe she's not at the cemetery yeah um and he says that, that made him makes him very nervous well that made him very nervous i said in as i should say 1908 um because unless this man's a vampire um he's probably long gone by now yep yep uh, so, <laughs> I guess that made the people quite freaked out. Because then 30 years later, they decided, you know what, let's just exonerate her. Um, and then they formed the, the her kind of society. They held a ceremony to exonerate her. And her name was officially cleared of all charges of witchcraft. Replicas of her trial documents were burned as a form of apology. Because, you know, after we, the woman has died, she can really accept it. Yeah. Um, so apparently ashes of these burned apologies were mixed with soil from the old coal farm and now they're stored in an urn in the Tuck Museum as a reminder of this tragic story. 
Apparently throughout the years, residents have told um, stories of seeing a mysterious old woman wandering the sheets. The sheets. <laughs> the sheets wandering the streets. streets. Once a policeman, on encountering a shawl-covered old woman, wanted her to be careful walking, 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 walking on the heavily travelled roads of Hampton. And apparently she... Re- but, so he said, I guess I'll get along all right. Um, I've been walking along these roads for hundreds of years. And then he apparently realised she was no ordinary wanderer. And then apparently uh, they weren't sure if they had appeased her and the devil enough. Yeah. So in 16, 1963, they, the city of Hampton erected a large um, erosion stone outside the museum, which sits on the site of what is presumably their farm. Um, the urn is obviously, like we said, still in the museum. Um, the more memorial stone um, is on the edge of Meeting House Green, which apparently has, and there's a lot of other monuments there. So you can, there are pictures of the urn. Um, on the internet, it looks like what is that to you? Tin, brass, copper, maybe yeah. brass. It looks brass because it's just the ashes of the apology and the dirt, yeah, uh, mixed together. And then they have a stone, and then there's a plaque in front of the stone, and it says, "In memory of Eunice Goody Cole, circa 1600 to 1680, accused of witchcraft, 1656 to 1680." And also, can we talk about how good an innings of 80 years is yeah. in the 1600s? Absolutely. Maybe that's why they thought she was, yeah, a witch man. Yeah, because maybe she, she looked flawless. On, yeah, flawless victory. So, uh, yeah. But the thing that creeps me out the most is that have you ever heard of a witch being staked before? I thought no. they just drowned or burnt the witches. Yeah, but they're like, this bitch is so fearful that she's going to be the only person in the state that we're ever going to convict of being a witch, and just her. Only yep. her and several times. Yeah. They'd be really paranoid. So she was a real kind of, you know, she really fought back. For so, her rights as a woman. Yeah. I know you must be a witch. Yep. Like, imagine that. Imagine if her husband was like, darling, my arthritis hurts me today. What what plan would do you think would help me? She's like, oh, my husband, my love, my lovely husband, who we were both slaves for. Actually, I shouldn't say that, but we were both uh, servants for. Yeah. From Old Town, England, my darling, whom I love so much, who we've we've endeavoured to travel across the Atlantic together. Alas, let me strip this willow bark for, we know it as aspirin, but yeah. they didn't know that, for its analgesic properties. My darling husband, let me steep that in your tea for you. And the next door neighbour's like, fuck that dumb bitch, witch. Yeah. She'd be a, she'd be a nutter. So, uh, yeah, I see that as a big joke. But shit went nasty back in the 16th century, even 15th century. You know, the equivalent today is us looking at those... Like, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I believe in some of them. But I ain't here spreading the bullshit about 5G coronavirus. Those people today should be convicted as witches because it's those people that are profiting yeah. off the back of other people's fear, hoarding shit, Selling shit for a marked up price. Everyone's making a fucking quick buck about this. People are making homemade masks that are bits of fucking cloth and fabric. Yeah. Saying, oh, it's going to save people. I'm going to sell it on the internet. No, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck everything about you. Yep. Yeah. It's like, essentially, if you're going to go and try and deal Profit. with this. Yeah, it's, you know, they should be fined. If you're purposely profiteering from this, you should be fined. What do you know? Why, do, why does someone need 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizer for? How much money, uh, at a markup price of 50 bucks a litre, because that's what um, AMCAL is doing, right? Yep. Um, say that they've got, what was it, guesstimate how many litres that is. Let's say it's just 1,000 litres. Okay, we'll say 1,000 litres. Which we know it's a tenth of what they have. Yeah. Let's say it's 1,000 litres times yep. by 40 bucks a litre. That's 40,000 Yeah, 40,000. Yeah, 40,000 right? bucks. I, I, you're calculating. I'm like, I, I think I know this math yeah, off yeah. the top of my head. That's just one person. One person. Assuming that they have a 1,000 a litres. Which yeah. we know it's a lot more than 1,000 yeah. litres. That's just one person. But here's the thing. Some of these hand sanitizer bottles, say like they're 200 mil each. So say, for instance, you've got 17,000 bottles of, you know, oh, let's say times 0.2. Yeah. 
equals that's 3,400 litres. Yeah. And then you're going to up market. To be like, oh, it's 20 bucks a bottle. 20 bucks. Because this is not me just pulling figures out of my ass. This is what's been. This has actually happened. And we were looking at it too. And this guy was selling them for 70, oh, sorry, was it 40 to $7, $70 each? Yeah. So times 70, that's nearly $1.2 million. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, why did they shut me down? Because there are healthcare workers that fucking need that shit. Yeah. Not fucking Gloria, Jenny, and Karen, who were fucking shopping every day just to get out of their house to get away from their six kids at home. Yeah, so the guy spent like nearly 40k buying to hand buy sanitizer freaking three to million make a million. Of shit. And that's just hand sanitizer. Yeah. That's not including the serviettes he had stuck piled, paper towels, yeah. um, face masks. And uh, Kim wipe, but not Kim wipes, alcohol wipes. But the thing is, there's people who have literally made bank off this. Literally made bank and got away with it. But you know what? Well, they didn't realise it's it's all taxed. Yeah. Because online ah, selling but see, is You get the business. people who've done this cash in hand. No, because you still even have to pay eBay. So if you're doing it through things on eBay and stuff... Yeah. But there would have been Amazon. people who would have bought things on the internet, bought in bulk, and then done a mm. cash in hand. It's like that dickhead um, who was on Sky... Well, the um, manager was on Sky News, but the dickhead who was, like, refunding 150 packets of 20... Was it 20 or 32 rolls yeah. of toilet paper? And he wanted to refund 150 packs. Yeah. And the store manager said on Sky no, News, get, get yeah. fucked, fuck off. Yeah. So, no way. Good on him. That man deserved Australian of the Year. Yeah. It's like, no way, get fuck, fuck off. It's like if, say for instance, someone's gone out and bought 300 packets of toilet paper. How much does that cost? But you think 299 people, say, had gone to get that. Say for instance, out of those 299 people, whatever, say 10% of them died or something due to that. So, technically, what you've done is you've profiteered and you've made it. You've applied unwanted, unnecessary hardship onto people who are already struggling. For example, that's a 24-pack of toilet paper we purchased before the crisis began. Yeah. Uh, before, I guess, the... Yeah. So, I want to say that we did that, what, four weeks ago now. Four, yeah. Five, so it's been a month, right? And we're only starting to go through it a bit more because I'm having a womanly problem, a womanly ailment, if you will. So we're going through it a I bit more. I bought Chinese yesterday. No, no, so no. That we wish it was Chinese. Chinese food. Thanks for covering, but no, no, no. Yeah. Um, and now we're going through it a bit, at a bit of a faster rate. But who needs a Karen? Why do you need a hundred and fifty packs of toilet paper? Imagine storing that. Where would you put it in the garage? No, these are people. I looked at TikTok and I looked at YouTube videos, right? Couponers, uh, this is what they're doing. So they have a whole room, minimum one room in their house. They have expert shelving. They have the can roll system, you know, the, yeah, the yeah. wire frame the, yeah. to have the cans and shit. It's one room and it's stockpiled of shit and it looks like a mini supermarket. Yep. Oh, that's the one where the, the girl was going through rotating everything. Yeah. But why? Well, a lot of people do it. And look, I do it too because I'm not for everything. I'm not to the purpose of I'm buying for six months worth of stuff. Yeah. But it's like, oh, like when I go past it by myself and it's just me on the before the weekend and you're at work and it's not like a normal shop. I'm like, oh, I'll get a couple of extra packets because I've got the money right now. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about it next week. Or yeah. Or pestering for later on. So I'm like, oh, I'll just get a couple of packets here and there. Right? That's what some people do. Yeah. To the extent that they're like, you know what, I'm going shopping this week. I'm just going out to get my vegetables. Yeah. But I'm going to get an extra two packets of pasta and one jar extra of pasta sauce. And they do that consistently. Whether it be every week, every month. Right? Yeah. They slowly add to it. Yep. And then they have a large long-term pantry. But they do And then they sensible. cycle it out. Yeah. Right? If I had the financial means and freedom, that's what I would do. Yeah. Right? I don't... We don't go through enough of cleaning products. The most we go through is like the exit mold because I'm very fanatic about cleaning drains and bleaching the shower once a week. Yeah. Sorry, but that ain't ever going to change. Um, but that I understand, right? If you're looking to just... It's not even stocking up. It's just like bulk buying. But not to the extent of I'm clearing out a whole pallet. Yeah. Just a couple extra products here and there. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Not to be like... 
I'm going to buy every pack, it's five gram, five kilogram packet of rice, so that way no other motherfucker can have any. It's just... Uh, so, the other problem too is, with all this bullshit that's going on, and the corona crisis, um, there is an increase in, you know, certain factions of the population suffering from severe and acute hunger. So what it's doing is it's driving, um, you know, a quarter of a billion people into starvation. So essentially, because there's so much talk about, oh yeah, you know, how do we, you think about it, you look at pop, you know, you look at pollution and everything and you look at people kind of going, okay, what happened once, you know, certain countries stopped the industrial production, the environment improved, the air quality improved. However, we've got too many people. So how do you cull a quarter of a billion people? But it's not genocide. No, but it's not. That's not what's happening. No, no, it's but not. But also, I haven't been checking. But are the shops like you've been shopping for us? Yeah. Have the shops been full? Like, are they restocking things, or are they still out? People are still out. Oh, some things are still out, like flour and everything. The scent, like the scent, like, like bread, some, pasta. Yeah, pasta those sauce. are going. So. To- is toilet paper still in, or is it? Yeah, gone? no, that's in. It's that's sort of not as Building stupid. Back up. I've noticed. Um, but also, too, there are people, a lot of people losing their jobs. So it sucks because they're saying that approximately was it 3.5 million Australians. Yeah, will lose their jobs. So essentially, then comes down to a case of, so if you've got people who are working the bare minimum jobs to try and get food on the table, and then they lose their jobs, but they don't qualify for any benefits, essentially they're going to starve. So then they have to go on the dole, but they have to wait. But because they've earned too much... Well, apparently they're expediting it. I don't know how they're doing it for people who fall out of the thing, but I don't know. But also, here's the other thing. We've just had this thing where Virgin Airlines has gone into administration, Administration. voluntary... Um, because you got, know why, Mr. What's his name? Brand, Branson. Doesn't want a sinking ship. No, but also, here's the other thing too. It's that company, because they've gone into administration like five or six times, yeah, haven't they? But Before he even picked it up. The government won't allow Qantas to have a monopoly over the airline industry. But they won't. We've got they Jetstar. Won't. Isn't Jetstar Australian? They, they don't count Jetstar and Tiger Airlines as anything. They look at it. It used to be Southern Cross Airlines. And now they look and at... And there was AT. Yeah. at and Oh, yeah. no. So... It was one with the gold diamond. Yeah. Like, the gold star? Gold diamond? Gold star. AT... It went bust... Yeah. ...in the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Um, I can't remember that name. But it was a gold star... Yeah. ...on the tail of the plane. I can't remember. Um, um, but essentially, you look at that and kind of go... A lot of the um, tourism industry is going to, like, literally halt, suffer, not bounce back. Um, business, Gold Star Air. Businesses is that are going. Yeah. No, 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 it's different. Um, so essentially, you have to look at a way to mitigate the damage. Like, at what point does it become okay? Too much of a a global challenge that it can't be beaten. You just let it roll out because essentially, some countries don't care. They literally mm-hmm. don't care, and they will hide the data. Like they haven't had any infections whatsoever. You know, you look at North Korea. Oh, yeah, we haven't had any, you know, deaths, nothing. Right. You know, funny how, you know, certain things happen, but... Ansett. That's right. Ansett. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there were a gold... Fuck, now that I know what it is. Yeah, Ansett, like, literally folded. You know, Ansett went ba ba No, it was an A, not a star. It was a gold A. Gold A, It looked like this. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. With the Anset. blue they and the dark blue. They didn't want Anset to fold, but Anset folded. So, all gone. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. But uh, it'd be more a case of how many donations can you uh, put in for people who are suffering. But then you've got people who are literally uh, abusing the system. So... Uh, what I don't understand is... Apart from this coronavirus epidemic, pandemic, people were catching flights every day. Exactly. Yes, they are. So, why are these airlines acting like they have no money when they charge 
fuck tons of money. Exactly. They have fuck tons of employees that they pay for free holidays for them as bonuses. So does that mean that they're living large paycheck to paycheck? Yes. Essentially? Yep. So they have no savings? No. Well, if you, look, also, then if a multi-billion dollar, million dollar corporation can't have savings, how are they expecting the average person, Australian, or any person in the world to have savings to get them through a pandem- an epidemic? Pandemic, 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 Stephanie. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No, because think of it this way. Um, the, H- the HIV and AIDS pandemic, at its peak, from 2005 to 2012 killed 36 million people. Yeah. 36 million. I think it's currently at any point in time in uh, Africa, up to 27.5 million people are infected. Yeah. There was even one in... uh, There was a flu pandemic in 1918 that took 20 to 50 million people. Mm. That was influenza. There's been multiple flu pandemics. Um, You know... Oh, no, they were all lab-made. Yeah. All lab-made. I mean... The big one, the big one, um, 1346 to 1353 was the Black Death, which was 70 to 200 it was plague, million. Wasn't it? The bubonic which was plague? Bu- yeah, bubonic plague. And then it's just like you look at bubonic plague, even like like really pushing all the way back to the plague of Justinian, 541 to 542. Do you remember the Minjikokul? Yeah. That was an epidemic, wasn't it? Yes. But how did that vaccine get rolled out so quickly? I don't. I, I can't remember that one. I'd because I remember, oh, that was like the early two. Was it late nineties? Early? It would have to be early two thousands. Yeah, right? and it's like people don't want you know encephalitis rolling out that fit, you know that fast. So yeah, that's why they pushed it. So um, yeah, it's just uh, this is all weird, really, really weird. But it's almost like you look at all these pandemics. And um, obviously, you know, pandemics aren't always a, you know, they, they don't have the ability to be predicted. You're not going to be able to predict how it goes, how, you know, what needs to be done, what's the best course to follow, yeah. you know. It's just a case of, you know, you go, okay, yep, everyone put in stay at home measures. Uh, we're just going to close businesses, stay out of public places, close schools. You know, companies are like, oh, what do but we what do? We don't want to. If you don't do it now, you're going to be doing it for longer. But here's the thing, though. These are the same companies who worry about share price. We can't afford for our share price to drop because it affects us. Our multi-million dollar paychecks, it affects us. Yeah. We'd rather lay off 20,000 workers than have our way of life suffer. So course, what they do yeah, is it's all a tax like, write-off. In the context of our uni, I follow a couple of, like on my professional Twitter, um, for like uni and shit, and... A couple of them, I'm not going to say names, but they are so out of touch with reality. Yeah. And they're talking about how, um, like, there's this one person who I had as a lecturer for my third year biochem, biomed, um, one of my lecture blocks, right? My One of my last few exams I ever had to take. And she was like, sorry, <laughs> this lecture was like, oh, I'm only working, walking less than 400 steps a day. I've been confined to my laptop at home for three days. It's like, you daft woman. How do you think we felt when we were studying for your exams? Yeah. 400 steps? I was lucky if I got freaking 200. Yeah. I'd go to bed, go to the bathroom a couple of times. The kitchen's right there. Maybe sit on the couch to read a printed out exam or a question I just answered. And that's it. Yeah. So. People are so out of touch. And they don't get it. But what are you going to do? Yeah, so, um... That's essentially... it. Essentially... That's where the cookie crumbles. Yep. Oh, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Just essentially, you know... Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Yeah, stay, stay safe. And just remember that, you know, probably the biggest one of all um, was smallpox. And get your flu shot. Yeah, get your flu shot because uh, smallpox literally has killed Not about... smallpox, for Pete's sake. The, the we... flu shot for influenza. Yeah, which is a quad strain, so go grab it. And then for that person that's just sitting there listening to it and wants to unsubscribe now because they're an anti-vaxxer, you know, good luck. You know, all uh, the best. You notice how the anti-vaxxers aren't bitching about um, vaccines and how they are donating? Yeah. To, to get their kids a vaccine. Yeah, funny how that works. Oof. Well, but what about all the ones in America at the moment that are all congregating in large groups? Are they going to get fined? Look, America's a very weird and scary place. Yeah. I 
fucking know. You know, we got drop beers. They got AK forty sevens and you know stuff. Yeah. Scary place. And, and on that note, so. But yes, thank you for listening to this uh, podcast. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please, uh, yeah, um, put in some requests, put in some comments. Yep, um, uh, you can find to... our topic request form. Yeah, um, I know some people say, uh, don't like, subscribe, but if you want to, up to you, see. it's there. We're not going to tell you to like and subscribe, no. but um, if you feel like And interested. obviously, you know, feel free to check out um, Steph of Oh, well, can we go through the list properly? Yeah, yeah, go through the list So properly. you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or you can email us at controlsandcouches at gmail.com. He's Full Metal Chicken. He keeps yeah. saying he's going to do some builds and edits. Yeah. We're still awaiting. Yeah. I'm Steph for far. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's us. That's Have us. a safe, happy week. May you be productive and focused. And that's all I have. Yeah, we're out. That's um, it. May the force be with you. And live long and prosper. And also with you. Hey. Um, and yeah, make sure you uh, keep out of mischief. Yep. And eat your vegetables. The veggies. For all those vitamins. Yeet. Yeah. So. And make sure if you come across a witch, you report them to Crime Stoppers. But just remember, they have to weigh the same as a duck. I don't get that reference. Monty Python. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, same as wood. Wood floats. Therefore, you know, a Oof. witch, you know, if, 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 if a witch floats, she's made of wood, therefore she can burn. You know, we found a witch, may we burn her. Well, that's a fair cop out, you know. All right, we're done. See you next week. Deuces. <laughs> I'm insane. <laughs> it's stuck in my head and it's the first, and you look at me every time like I'm an idiot when I say it. And now yeah. you said it. Yeah, now I said it. So, you on become that note, everything you swore to destroy. Yeah, I've become a, you know, a vegetable. Yep. So, on that right, note, that's it. we're out signing off. We are be gone. Well, gone. Well, until right, next enough. week. Enough. <laughs> Adios, muchachos. Signing off. 